Renan Sikot is the minister in charge of Estonia's energy policy. She joins us live now from Tallinn. Renan, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Before we talk about Estonia's situation uh, in, in particular, which is slightly different from the rest of Europe, I just want to get your thoughts on what's happening in Europe right now, because the EU is facing an energy crisis of epic proportions. What's at stake and what's next for the EU as we head into the winter months? Uh, yes, hello. And if anyone was still thinking, what is the game that we are playing, then Putin has made it all clear that uh, it, it, it is a war situation. So, and since we know that democracy is terrifying for Putin, I, I've told my colleagues that democratic states being united, even uh, during tough times, it's a weapon Putin can never match. Uh, so the challenge uh, uh, for Europe is to be united, to find the solution, to, to reduce our energy demand, to, to cap Russian um, uh, energy sources and, and actually come off of Russian energy as uh, quickly as possible. And I, I agree with Ursula von der Leyen that we have the political will. If we keep the solidarity and the unity, we can survive the tough winter. Estonia is, I guess, lucky in this situation because it has alternative sort of fuel sources in the form of uh, shale oil. Just, just walk us through that. I mean, it's not the cleanest form of energy, um, but it certainly can protect you from what other countries in the EU are going through right now. How are you trying to revitalize this industry, given what's happening with Russia? Mm -hmm. uh shale oil, oil shale that we use uh, uh, to produce our energy is it it uh, has a lot of co2 waste and it's a source that we would like to come off and we, we have plans for that to increase the investments in into renewable energy sources uh, but temporarily uh, this winter and that might be during the next winter as well uh, yes the uh, oil shale uh, production has gone up and we use it uh, to do uh, survive during the winter but in addition uh, to that uh, we also have combined this heat and power cogeneration plants that use local biomass uh, but the, the reason we use local sources is that we have been uh, skeptical about the ties, energy ties to Russia, and we have come off Russian gas during the past 10 or 15 years. So we were in a much better situation than other European member states. Uh, so the platform we started from was different. So it's, it's easy to, to uh, take the position that we should... Uh, lose any ties to Russian energy and uh, um, sanction Russian oil and uh, uh, gas. This is the Estonian position and, and I, I hope uh, the sooner or later we can get to that. But phasing out the Russian fossil fuels, it's, uh, it's necessary now, but it drives us to the right direction. It, the long-term plans we have, these haven't changed that investing into renewables and reducing demand. Otherwise, it, it might be very difficult to explain to people why do we have to re reduce uh, energy demand. But now in a war situation, in, during very tough times, it's easier to communicate that this type of behavioral change in, 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 in Estonia in, and mm -hmm. I think other European uh, member states as well. Yeah, it certainly highlighted really the importance of a gradual shift, more of a shift towards renewables. But as you point out, Estonia was somewhat forward thinking in weaning itself off of Russian energy um, long before this war with Ukraine. But in terms of the reliance now, in the short term at least, on, on oil shale, just walk us through what that means for climate goals for Estonia. Because obviously, as you point out, um, it isn't the best for the environment, this form of energy. Uh, yes, I, I think Estonia has the most wasteful energy uh, production in the European Union. And uh, this, uh, it, it can't be a long-term solution. And before the energy crisis, uh, oil shale, it wasn't really, uh, it, it didn't uh, uh, stand any chance uh, in our energy markets because renewables, they were much cheaper. 
But now, since uh, anything that can give us electricity uh, is on the market, then oil shale has like a renewed chance. Uh, but uh, we understand that this is something that's uh, forced on us and mm -hmm. any investment should be uh, done into renewables. But uh, we, in addition to the production, it's very important how do we divide energy and it's through market. And at least in Estonia, the, the, uh, this popular voice is saying that the high prices, they come from the energy market. So there's something wrong with the market. But it's, it's not the market system. Uh, it's just the lack of energy that we face and the quick uh, phasing out of Russian fossil fuels. So keeping trust in the market system is a common challenge for all European member states. And the Estonian position is that any, uh, I don't know, decision or changes that we make uh, should be uh, uh, done in, in 27 countries uh, similarly. Uh, making uh, 27 different systems or different changes at the same time, it, it doesn't give us uh, the results. So keeping unity uh, in mm. terms of uh, uh, answering uh, Russia's threats, but keeping unity in how we uh, make the necessary changes in the energy markets, it's, it's also important. Yeah, that is a really good point, actually. And obviously, there have been lessons learned on the over-reliance on and over-dependence on one country for an entire continent's energy needs. Um, the EU is, of course, learning that lesson the hard way. All right. Yeah, uh, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being with us. All right. Up next.